Hi, welcome to What The Hey. Thank you for joining me to check out a video that someone suggested I react to and that person was One Punch Man, so hello to you. Thank you once again for the request. And the actual content that I'm checking out today is titled Film Theory, The Hidden Lore of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, which was uploaded on July 28th of 2016. The video duration is 16 minutes and 42 seconds, and the video description gives links to other social media accounts and a brief opener for the video. And this video itself is uploaded by the film theorists, so if you would like to check the channel out or the video that I'm actually reacting to, I will have those linked and tagged in the description if you want to check them out. Also in the video description, if there's anything in this content that I feel like someone would like to be warned about, I'll mention that there, and that's really only there if you want to read it. Um, and then finally, in the comment section, I'll pin a little comment with the different segments and timestamps of this video, so if there's really only a specific portion you want to watch, that will be there for you to use as well. Uh, but I believe that is all the precursor stuff, so let's actually check out the video itself. I guess it's my turn to choose a card. Yes. Let's see. Hmm. What's really going on and don't hug me, I'm scared. Great yes. question. If only there was some way to learn more information about this. There probably is. I'm a computer. I'm Why a do computer they all have brown hair? Are they all technically like Matt Pat? And they got the intro and everything. Fantastic. Bro just disappeared? Okay. Hello, that sounded like the Welcome Wilhelm scream, just theory, a little bit. We watch our internet videos a quarter frame at a time. You think I'm Very joking, in but when it comes to Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, it's pretty accurate. These videos are so densely packed yep. with detail when and lore. symbolism that you can yes. watch them over and over and, still and miss over stuff, again yep. and still come up with new Easter eggs you've never seen before. The dad, just probably. Just one scene at the end of the third episode of Don't Hug Me. The first time you watch, you might see Roy, yellow guy's oh, dad, wow. standing there while his son is in Indoctrinated into the cult of Malcolm. We Keep love looking cults, and you'll notice though. the notepad and clock from the prior two episodes standing there behind him dressed in white robes. Keep searching and you see Red Guy and Duck there too. Really? When they're supposed to be at their delicious oh, chicken right. picnic, unaware of where Yellow Guy even is. Or how about here in episode five? The random Duff bridge. Quits the show. There are a few frames of Red Guy's spaghetti head in the microwave. Oh, wow. And a few frames later, his legs where the meat man was standing just seconds before. And it isn't just limited to the video. At the end of episode 5, we see Red Guy leaving a phone booth. Google search for the phone number on that phone booth, and you find this hidden video. That's really too detailed. The log is in the beer. How do they so even... Are those duck boats the smoking gun that decode everything that's going no, on in No, I would hope not. <laughs> No, yeah, no. no, they aren't. But you They're just there. I took it all into account of in my creation of today's theory. Because it's last Matt time Pat, that's what he does. Stuff, the symbolism of the story and how it represents a children's television show corrupted by the influence of advertising. But today, instead of looking at what Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared means in our world, we're going to explain what it means in its own world. Who Very are complicated characters? universe. What is the deal with all these Easter eggs? And how should we be interpreting the ending? Is it even an ending at all? Not I've really. Got the answers all here for you and by the end of this video, I guarantee to have you digital dancing. Now, as I watched and rewatched the series, even though Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck are the ones who appear on camera most often, these videos seem to have two main characters. Red, Red guy, guy, definitely. Yes, and Roy. The dad. Yellow Guy's porn surfing father. And that's reinforced. That's very blunt six, and very the accurate. The sequence of events revolves around the relationship between these two. But who are they? Additionally, in a series full of bizarre moments, two events seem to be the most game-changing. Red Guy's literal mind blow at the end of the mm -hmm. computer episode and the dramatic shift to real life in the middle of episode Very depressing, six. yes. It's my theory that if we could somehow answer who those two characters are and what those two events stood for, then this whole enigma ball would unravel. So I started with the guy that we have the most information about. Red guy. Now, as he looks like a lobster time, to me. To That's what I've always thought he was. With Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck as performers on the series. Oh, there you are. 
We've been looking for you all afternoon. Don't get me wrong, I didn't say that they're good performers, but they are performers nonetheless. In addition to all the camera and set imagery we discussed last time, there are multiple instances where things don't go as planned and Red A Guy really good breaks budget, the for real. wall to address what seems like someone behind the camera. The first Quite instance literally. of this occurs in episode 2 when the clock begins to talk. Red Guy turns to the camera, genuinely confused, he dances. saying quietly, that? Then again, at the beginning of episode 4, the red guy delivers his setup. If only there was a way to learn more about the world. Then there strongly is. indicates towards the globe. Unfortunately. Even the music cue follows him. Duck then joins in, trying to cue the reveal of the globe, but both are genuinely caught off guard by the computer mm -hmm. coming to life. Apparently a change in the script that neither were made aware of. It's made especially clear that Red Guy wasn't in on this change when he reveals that they already had another computer, a cute laptop, but is once again cut off before he can get through his thoughts. From there, Red Guy tries to shut the computer up it's by all saying things really like, too in depth. What's your favorite color? They all Do seem like they're going the through so much trauma, to freak out. and I don't so know why. Red Guy is both unaware of and very displeased by these unexpected He's going changes. on strike. So then, who is he? Well, that answer comes to us in the final episode, Dreams. It starts with Yellow Guy left alone. I think I've seen this. Lamp, yes, I have. Transitions to Red Guy IRL at a desk IRL. job the creativity song at a karaoke bar to receive, let's just say, less than stellar reviews. Now, most other theories see this as occurring in the present day, but what makes more sense is that this scene is actually a flashback. To I don't even want to imagine that this show. thing has a timeline. He at a boring desk job and had dreams of making a children's television program. I mean, look at the way he pitches the idea of the singing file to his boss, something that becomes physically manifested later in the oh. video. More on that in a minute. But truly, despite the monotone voice, this guy is a guy with dreams. Dreams that sometimes seem like Get you're getting ruined drowned in a pool of for oil some reason. Or off stage with all the enthusiasm of a YouTube comment section. But within that sea of board disapproval, one person watching the red guy's performance is wasn't the dad guy. Roy. And it's here that we for some finally reason. learn of the secret to their relationship. Roy discovered Red Guy at an open mic night and made him a deal to sponsor the kids show that Red Guy had always wanted. How would you know that though? How do we know that Roy is the sponsor? It's easy. We're expressly told it in the credits. Episodes 2 through 6 of DHMIS end with a special thank you to Ooh, all the kids. That's backers. way too the small of a detail. In every episode is Roy because he too is a financial backer. In fact, within the lore of the series, he's the main backer, a sponsor with greedy motives who gets out of hand. Why? Why, Red though? guy is out of the picture in episode five. We see very clearly Such in the small details. episode that Roy sells food products. His name is littered everywhere. But more specifically, notice the foods his name is on: Roy's flour, Roy's health juice, Roy's oats, and Roy's. So plates. everything. Most of these Those are look like beans. Meat. Now compare that to what the meat in the can are teaching the children as healthy: all foods that are grain or dairy based, and also aspic. But this theme of questionable health benefits behind plain foods doesn't stop there. It also appears in a bizarre interview the characters did with the British website It's Nice That in May of 2016. In it, Red Guy says that he's trying an all plain foods diet and that oh, it's that causing is way some too disturbing deep. side effects. I wonder if his teeth are turning The lore red. Fact, is way Roy's too deep. role as a food producer can even tie in with the overalls that he and his son wear. And this isn't the first time that we've seen some product placement in these episodes. In episode 4, the computer prints out a picture of oat cereal Which and is also connected shows to his them dad? a picture of the same cereal in the newspaper. If you look really closely, you can even see the Oats, Oats digital dancing. Considering the theory that Red Guy is the creator and Roy is the sponsor, this product placement was probably a big point of contention. But with Red Guy no longer on the there show he as goes. of episode 5, Toward Roy was freedom. free to fill the video with as many products and skewed health messages as he wanted to, turning it from being educational to being one big commercial. That is how happen. the internet check is, the I final suppose. Moments of episode four, frame by frame, you see both Duck and Yellow Guy glitch into the picture. But look closely and you'll see that their brains are exposed. A sign that they've been brainwashed by the computer. So if Roy's the sponsor, then what's the deal with Yellow Guy calling him his dad? Well, he's not lying. Because that is his the dad. Show, Roy can make sure that his son is put into the spot.
spotlights. This That's explain true. why Yellow Guy is clearly the most inexperienced of the three on camera. But don't think for a second that Roy is some stage mom trying to get his son famous. Quite the contrary. Going back to that It's Nice That interview, we actually is that a real Roy thing? for the only time ever throughout the entire series. When asked if he had anything to say, he responds with the following. My silly boy has allowed his eyes to grow arrogant and rude. For wow. this, I will take him on a trip to Punish Land. Yikes! Punish That's Land. serious. Someone tells me this isn't Disney World's latest park extension. But when you look at the series, it actually makes a lot of sense. Yellow Guy has been the victim from the very beginning. In episode one, his painting is destroyed and he's told that his favorite color isn't created. Mm -hmm. In episode two, the clock yells at him. Man, it's weird to see the old videos. Three, They've been around for a long time. A cult. In episode four, he gets brainwashed by the computer. In episode five, he pulls a Scott Tennerman and eats his friend. And then in episode six, is tortured by an unending barrage of inane lessons. Oh yeah, and also drowns in oil. But if you think Roy's Punish Land stops there, well, boy howdy, you are wrong. Observant viewers will spot horses sprinkled all over DHMIS videos. Pictures of horses, rocking horses. How horse would you even recognize this horses. stuff? Well, it's like important. With it's nice that it's revealed that Yellow Guy is scared of horses. What? He's also apparently allergic to eggs, wasps, crabs, meat, and it's trees, also random. All of which are elements that we see worked into various episodes throughout the series. Roy's not only sponsoring the series to push his own goods, he's also doing it to push his son to the brink of insanity. But why? Because he's arrogant? Scared, most famous Easter egg fits in with the idea of Roy teaching Yellow Guy a lesson. The unchanging date of June 19th yeah. has bothered would-be theorists since the second episode, but we have our answer right now. Is that his, June like, 19th, birthday or something? 1955, the date which we see hinted at over and over again throughout the series was Father's Day. Oh. In 2011, when the first episode of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared was released, Father's Day was also on June 19th. And this year, the date of release for the very last episode was oh, June 19th, no. which lo and the behold, final stand. was once again Father's Day. Roy is punishing his son for letting his eyes grow arrogant and rude. Maybe something about catching his dad watching porn. But regardless, he forces him to respect his authority by making every day Father's Day. That's a tough. Constant reminder of his of own who father. Is in charge. As long as the date is June 19th, Yellow Guy is doomed to suffer the That was the scariest part, no I feel like. In sight. Or at least that's what would have happened if not for Red Guy. Which means it's finally time so he's to like talk the about savior. The okay. At the end of episode four, Red Guy resists being lured into Roy's computer world, leaving the living room set with Roy hidden in the corner and instead noticing that the computer is hooked up to a mysterious red cable leading to the next room. When he opens the door, it's revealed that he's covered in motion tracking balls and discovers a super low-tech version of episode one being recorded then his head explodes so what does all this mean well the head explosion is literally mind-blowing version of red guy's mind being blown mm -hmm. but what exactly blew his mind in the first place it's all many fake. said it's him realizing that he's on a tv show but as we've seen already both he and duck break the fourth wall repeatedly meaning they know they're on camera instead i think the revelation is a lot more positive notice that he follows a red cable hooked up to the computer and that he's leaving Roy's room. A room, mind you, with higher production value, filled with props and motion capture ability, only to find himself in a room with a crude set and props. Red Guy's mind blow in this moment is that he doesn't need the dominating presence of Roy. He can, he can survive on his own. On a low budget and load it directly onto the computer, i.e. a place like YouTube, without needing a bunch of money. Do they know Remember, of YouTube, though? Remember, is all about what you can do on a computer. According to Roy, it's all superficial consumerism things. Charts, digital style, dance, Mm. But here, Red Guy sees a video being filmed and uploaded directly to a computer. And again, based on what we discussed last the video, the intense music is making this The creators of DHMIS took to keep their series independent. So, Red Guy leaves Roy's series, and then in episode 5, we repeatedly see imagery of him on the outside looking He's in. locked He's out. Oh, at the wow. Series from a new outsider's perspective. He's Those basically dead. Phone calls for Duck throughout the episode are coming from him. We see him exiting a phone booth at the end of the episode, oh. crying out loud. It's, it's him all connected. To let them know that there's another option that they can and need to escape to stop selling their souls to Roy. Duck answers and tries to get away, but as we see, is captured, canned, and consumed. But is Duck Rip. getting eaten literal? It's hard to say. Seems like it shouldn't be, right? But then again, Roy is a farmer, and Duck is the only character who happens to be an animal. Uh, the can that we know consuming of. the duck could be the duck getting canned. 
Uh, All of this comes uh, to a head in episode 6. Yellow Guy is the last one standing on the show, held there by his father. Once the episode gets underway, we see the origins of the series, with Red Guy being discovered by Roy at karaoke. We then cut to Red Guy discovering, for lack of a better term, the show machine, which creates the characters and situations. How would that you even know that that's the, the beginning, though? Now, mind you, none of this is literal. It's all meant to be symbolic. This is Red Guy coming to grips with the show he created and seeing for the first time ever with clear eyes the effect it's having on kids like Yellow Guy. Roy discovers Red Guy trying to shut down the machine and, and his reaches arm his can hand extend. out to touch the Red Guy on the shoulder. It's not a gesture of aggression. It's more like a peace offering, an invitation I to would come say back and work not. on the show once again. Because face it, what else does it seems Red very Guy aggressive. have? In a society full of negativity towards his ideas, Roy was the only one willing to take a chance on him. And you see, that's the brilliance of episode 6 here. It starts by addressing typical dreams, the ones that happen at night, but when you look again, it's actually about personal dreams, and how seeing a dream achieved, like Red Guy finally creating the show he always wanted, can turn into a waking nightmare. But it's at that yes. moment that Red Guy decides to literally and figuratively pull the plug, pull the plug on both the show and his relationship with Roy, eager to see what will happen next. Ending a bad relationship. The series, Yay. But with some very important differences. All the characters are now the color they said was their favorite in episode one, blue, red and green still the, date the 19th on the calendar though changes from june 19th to june 20th, never mind meaning that it's no longer father's day and roy has no influence on the show anymore it is they are quite free. literally the start of a new day and that also makes sense yeah. when you look at the sets at the beginning of episode one the kitchen is full of props like knives and plates and books very and dangerous but the reset version at the end of episode six is very simple with just a table and a few other items without roy's sponsorship they're working on a smaller budget it's less the dangerous are finally free. The notepad flips open and the first episode begins again, but this time it's on their own terms. This time green will be a creative color. But hey, oh, yeah. that's just a just theory. Just a theory. A film theory. And Thank you, Matt. But... Cut. Oh, cut, cut, cut it out. Nice. And Roy. That's great. He's still at least there, that's technically. My interpretation. And at the heart of it, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is all about creativity and interpretation. I've seen other theories that are way different from this one that I've laid out for you, but they all still deserve your respect and attention. After all, when asked don't by the hate UK on news other site Metro about fan theories for Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, co-creator Becky Sloan said, quote, We've read a lot of theories online about what it all means, and they are, and they all, are correct. all correct. So don't watch the Ooh. show again. Look for your Spooky. own Easter eggs. Come up with your own theory and leave it in the comments below. There's only one rule, though, guys. Be creative. And with that, we uh. leave behind DHMIS. As we close the book on this two-parter, I gotta ask, of the six episodes of Don't Hug Me, which was your favorite one? The first. Creativity, time, love, computers, healthy eating, or dreams? Click on one to choose. I'm really curious which one you responded to most. I'm a toss-up between creativity and computers. The love one was good, too. I'm just glad to be done with this. He I've likes all of them. I've been watching these videos over and over and over again, and most of the time it's at, like, midnight or one in the morning. These are not Fair things enough. that you want to watch a bunch of times before you go to bed. Trust me. No. No, really. Trust me. Anyway, click on one to choose. Is that his own vote. character yeah, within the, the universe? Results, That's no, great. No, excuse me. I'm going through some superhero withdrawals. Or should I say super villain withdrawals? Ooh, spooky. Intense. Got more lore, which is nice. So somehow, I think that this is the first time I've ever seen a MatPat video in general, which is surprising because he's been on YouTube for so long. Like, I've seen a lot of MatPat related memes, and I've seen him in other content. I just don't think I've ever, like, sat through a straight up MatPat related video. But one thing that I definitely expected to see in this video was the amount of detail that MatPat went into to like explaining the lore of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared because that series itself has been on the internet for a long time. I think I first heard about Don't Hug Me I'm Scared when like the first original episode came out and you had channels on YouTube like Teens React covering it and no one had any idea like what the whole video was about because like the series wasn't finished so we didn't have all this lore and all the different characters so it was just very obscure when it first came out. But you know of course it's helpful when you have channels with like Matt Pat who actually look into the details of everything and are actually curious to find out answers even though sometimes the connections and the information that is discussed doesn't seem super like connected and it doesn't really make sense it's just cool to see. 
because as he mentioned like the creators literally said like all the theories are correct so technically i guess all the theories that he made in this video are correct but in general it was interesting to see how matpat was able to build everything up into like a timeline and organize everything because i wouldn't be able to do that especially with like the date according to the series being the same like with every video so i wouldn't know how to do that but the fact that he's able to line up all the details and do that is very impressive so the editing of the video was very fun, the details that were discussed very interesting because once again I couldn't figure out any of that myself. And then Matthew Patrick himself, like his voice is always just very interesting to listen to and he sounds very engaging so it's very easy to watch through the entire video. I also feel happy for him because every time he's able to finish a series that means he doesn't have to struggle and look through more because I know with like Five Nights at Freddy's and everything else he's done he's had to put so much time and effort into that so it's nice that he can put one series away and be done with it. But that is essentially the reaction and once again I'll have the video itself as well as the channel linked so if you want to check out either of those they are there for you. Uh, but that is it so thank you very much for watching. Bye!